we can begin the session more formally with perhaps just doing some level setting, so to speak, on definitions and maybe differential diagnosis. And we're presenting this as though there are very crisp boundaries between anhedonia, emotional blunting, and apathy. I think we're doing that because we want to reduce some of the confusion, but we recognize there's probably a fuzzy boundary. There here. is a very fuzzy and gray zone yeah. between some of these. One of the questions asked us to differentiate this, and you can see emotional blunting, apathy, and anhedonia in the far right with that little cartoon there. And um, I suppose in some respects the, this serves a very useful purpose because it does begin with at the bottom what they share in common, that being the reduction in positive, in positive emotion. But if you look upwards, we'll start from positive emotion, there are differences. Emotional blunting, I always see emotional blunting as diminished reactivity. Not just positive, but less reaction to negative. Indeed. And apathy, which is often described more in the world of neurology for some reason, is a decrease in motivation which involves aspects of reward and cognition. An effort that one is willing to expand. Exactly. And then anhedonia, yes, they don't enjoy the excursion of positive, but they certainly have the negative excursion. So there's a negative. So you can see how anhedonia and emotional blunting differentiate. Let's go into this a little bit more. Emotional blunting is the decrease in reactivity to both positive and negative. And at first glance, in someone who is highly anxious or highly reactive or has a interpersonal style of reactivity that's exquisite, this could be a good thing at first glance. Indeed. But at second glance, it may not be a great thing because these persons also have a decrease in positive reactivity. So the report in your office is, I feel numb, I feel indifferent, I feel I'm in an emotional straitjacket, I feel detached. And this is part of the illness of major depressive disorder it's also a artifact of treatment. It's a side effect of some treatment. And our task is often to sort this out. 